Once again, I'd um, like to welcome everyone um, to our annual summer leadership banquet. My name is Michael Bridgeport. I'm the Assistant Executive Director at the uh, Summit University Teen Center. Uh, a lot of you know it as the Loft Teen Center. Um, right now, I'm going to introduce the staff. Um, we will then um, serve dinner, and from at that point, um, excuse me, they shouldn't have this music on right now. At that point, um, we will start our program. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Jim Robinson. He is the executive director of the center. He's been with the center since, uh, since the inception. Melvin Robinson. He is the uh, director of our adolescent pregnancy prevention program. He's been with the center for almost one year now, and he's been with us off and on um, probably over the last five years. Next, I would like to introduce Melinda Nelson. She is the director of our She's the director of our participatory recreation program, which basically entails uh, our, leaf, our youth leadership training program. Uh, she conducts our uh, community service projects, and she uh, directs the, the teens and teen council. Um, and then, if you can step from behind the camera, uh, that is Will Miller. <laughs> Willie Miller. He has been with the center uh, going on, I believe, five years. He uh, assists Gail in the leadership training program. Uh, he is a youth worker, and he helps out in the other programs as well. Uh, then next, uh, I would also like to uh, introduce a person. He is not a staff member, but he's a volunteer, and he's volunteered for us um, in the last, I guess, the, the 10 years we've had the program, he has, uh, assisted us for, I believe, eight years. Uh, one of the years he did not assist was on my behalf. I didn't know if he wanted to, so I, I failed to ask, uh, and then he got on me. But uh, his name is uh, Mitch McDowell. And with that, uh, we will uh, begin the, the preparation. Uh, for for dinner, if you can just hold one moment, please, and I'll let you know how we're going to conduct that. table and she will direct the table to go uh, up to the buffet and you can get a plate and pick whatever you would like to get uh, uh, and then she will come and, and get another table so please be patient everyone will have a chance to uh, get something to eat and you'll probably be able to go up there two three four times if you like <laughs>
uh, Jim Robinson to come up and uh, give uh, remarks uh, as it relates to the summer program. Thank you. Just uh, for your um, information, this is the 10th year of the leadership program. Uh, 10 years and basically it's a program that Michael Richford started. Uh, comes out of the Harry Davis Foundation. And 10 years ago, we thought it would be something good for young people. When we started the program, it was really for adults. We moved it into young people and what we see this evening. So Michael, I'd like to thank you for your part in inviting us with the leadership program. Just a few uh, quick remarks. Many of the parents who are here today, um, I always say thanks to the parents, thanks to the moms, the dads, the grandmas, the grandpas, the aunts, the uncles. They are the important people who have been part of what we do. And if you only knew how important, when I see you here on a day like today with your child and other parents see other parents, it's importantly parents with their children. So I thank you for that. And then, we took a trip this summer from we the Six Flags. And that all came about because of Hustleful Presbyterian Church and the Benevolence Committee. And Betty Clapp is here this evening. Betty, would you mind standing, please? you uh, might know this, uh, people who have been around. The Summit University Teen Center started some 30 years ago and started with the blessings of 13 churches. And House of Hope was one of those churches that started Summit University Teen Center years ago. And they are back being a financial contributor. And we were one of the first United Way agencies that came into the United Way family when there was Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, Campfire, and all of the organs and brought into the United Way. So a lot of the programs that you see today, they were not in existence, and uh, came in along with uh, Peter City Beautifully about a year after us. So Patrick, we thank you for being here. Thank you much. For me, more importantly, uh, we have a staff of a very few people, and we try to do a lot of things with a very small staff, and sometimes that's impossible. I would like to thank the staff for the work that they've done this past summer, and more importantly, the work that they do during the course of the year. So let's give a big round of applause. I become long-winded, and I will not do that this evening. Uh, I will conclude by saying uh, thanks to the young people. Uh, it was a very challenging summer because we did some things differently than we've done before, and we brought in younger uh, people for the first time. Uh, it worked, and it didn't work. Uh, will we do it again? We really don't know. Uh, but it's important for the young people to realize that once you get into your teen years, it becomes a lot different. We expect a lot more of you, and fortunately, you're gonna be around, and we'll probably see you again next year, but whether we do the same thing or not, we really don't know, because that was a real challenge uh, this past year. Uh, with that, uh, thank all of you for coming, and I appreciate the time and effort that you've put into our work at the center, and again, on behalf of the staff, Thank you. Well, I have a couple of remarks. Um, the parents that, uh, what, what parents rode on the bus? Okay. I don't know what the, uh, the second bus was like, but the first bus, <laughs> we had a whole bunch of singing <laughs> off key. 
we just had a whole bunch of comedy on, on the way here, uh, which was very reminiscent of uh, our trip to uh, Six Flags this past weekend. A lot of singing, a lot of joking, uh, and once again, a lot of singing off key. <laughs> I had the pleasure of sitting across on the way to Six Flags, on the way back from Six Flags, on the way here to uh, Cedrica Simmons. <laughs> she had one song that she played over and over and over and over again. This song was Cleopatra. I do not ever want to hear that song again. Also, on the way over here, uh, I sat in front of my daughter and uh, Angel Edwards. They're singing a song by R. Kelly. What was the name of that song? No, the other one before that. Boy, you might. They were singing a song, and the first thing that came to my mind, I'm like, I'm glad we have a leadership training program. You know, I'm really glad that we have a leadership training program because the song that they were singing, if there, there you go, there you go. The song was, there's nothing wrong with the little bumping drive. <laughs> so now, once again, this is a really popular song, but you know, once again, this is what our, our, our youth is, is they're exposed to. So, you know, I was just thinking, you know, it's really important that uh, we we have uh, a leadership training program because a song is a song, but sometimes people take those songs literally and uh, make it a way of life. Because there is something wrong with the little bump and grind when you're 15 years old. So, um, and, and once again, I, and I'm not you know, saying that, that, that our youth were, were, were wrong for singing the song. It's a popular song. I know the song. I know every lyric. But you know, uh, those are the forces that we have out there. And we need to combat those forces. Uh, with some education, uh, with some guidance. So, you know, it's really important, uh, the work that we do, uh, it's really important, the youth that we see that participate in our program. So, uh, just without e any further ado, I'm gonna jump right into uh, the, the award ceremony itself. I'm gonna start with the Adolescent Pregnancy Prevention Program and uh, Melvin Robinson. Danny Moore 
ahead. Dylan Moorhead. Annette Simmons. Francesca Walden. Sequan Vaughn. Kara Johnson. And 
Lucy Cha. participants so we're going to stop with the awards at this point and jump into the uh, remarks by our participants and then go back to the uh, award ceremony portion uh, at this point I'd like to know is there any participants that would like to come up front and talk about um, their experiences in summer Tay. Tay. Shonda, she has uh, been in our programs for a number of years. Uh, she's been the president of our team council. She's been a peer leader uh, in our youth leadership training program. She sits on our board of directors, so that's why she's pretty emotional. She's put a lot of energy, a lot of effort, uh, and is, she is a leader uh, for tomorrow. So. Is there any other participants? Tadra. Um, you're taught how to do a lot of neat stuff. So, 
you know anybody that's looking for a job that's around 13, 14 or up, tell them to come to the Summit University team too. That is exactly what uh, Tadre did. He has recruited some kids to work for us this past year. Annette Simmons. speak so that tells you that she's going to be a leader and you know it took her a while to get what she wanted to say out but she had the courage to do it. So. Amen. Come on a bike can't I? Ludell. Della Morgan. Yeah, I'm sorry. Ludell. She's not in my program so I don't know everybody's there so I'm sorry. <laughs> What's up, guys? I just like to say that these programs are very helpful to our things. I didn't know the um, staff members are very, they were very helpful. Um, they taught me like things I didn't know, it's like, say for instance, um, STD. They taught me like gonorrhea and all that stuff. For leadership, they talked about gang violence and stuff like that. It was really helpful. I'd like to say thank you to so, all the staff members. Marcel Jackson. Ah, people. <laughs> I just wanna I just wanna talk a little bit about leadership. Leadership. There's a program where you go to and they teach you different skills that you need to know in life. So when you go out and like get a job, like for me, they taught me when I was in Michael's group. Come on, come on. When I was in Michael's group, he taught me um, communication skills. Like, you know, I can run around the hood, you know, what's up, dog? <laughs> but he taught me communication skills, like what I know to, what I need to know to help me get a job or what I need to know to become a manager of a factory or start my own business, you know? And leadership was a program on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, somewhere you can go, get paid, you know, that's the end. And keep, you, and keep you out of trouble during the week, like, because most of y'all probably sit around the house watching cartoons, right? Right, right. I know I do, but we have the crunch. <laughs> but, you know, I just want to get a prop to leadership and uh, to Gail, Mike, Melvin, Will, everybody for helping me out this summer. Thank you.
Darcel is auditioning for a sitcom on the Fox Network. <laughs> I would like to say this has been a good year for me and it helped me out this year. I would like to say thank you. disclaimer out to all the parents that may have heard. We did impromptu speeches, and one of the youth gave me a speech to do. So if you heard about me having an affair with Bill Clinton, it is not true. It wasn't me. Is there any other participants that like to come up? Once again, is there any other participants before we move on? <laughs> yes, Suda. Cleopatra, come on up. 
<laughs> we just got a request from a parent, do not sing. <laughs> She said, I'm about it, about it, we're gonna go bungee jump. <laughs> so we did. Benjamin. Leadership, we also learn 
learned, we learned. Drug awareness, we learned about drugs and all different drugs, and we watch videos about how bad it was to do drugs and what side effects are. And we learned all the different life, the um, all the communication skills. We learned about what communication was and different ways to show it, different ways to say it. And we also learned leadership styles. And we learned, um, I think it was four or three. Um, laissez faire is. You're a lazy leader, but yet fair. You you're okay unless your keep your workers are um, okay. And democratic is that you um, take other people's opinions. And authoritarian, you want all the power. Don't care about nobody. <laughs> we also learned about problem solving. Like in Mitch's workshop group, we he gave us like five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars in a group to see how much we spend, what we're gonna do, what we're gonna um, what concerts we're gonna go to. A, clothes we're gonna wear, and wear our nails, and our hair, and what CD, what video, and all that stuff we was gonna do. We had to save as much money as possible. And I say, we save a lot of money. <laughs> we only spent $154, and we had $500, so we had like, I think we had, I don't know how much money we had left, but we had a lot. It was like two people in my group. And we also, we did community service, out there helping our community and yeah, doing right. that stuff, and that's so we did leadership. Thank you. Thank you. And what she said is truly the essence of uh, what the program is really all about. Uh, Darcel had put his hands up, so Darcel, could you come on up again? Oh, just, just a little something uh, about Darcel. Besides all the joking, you know, all the plan, he is the comedian of, of our whole program. But uh, underneath all that, when we can get him to stop joking, he has some really powerful things and good information. So, uh, again, people, um, I want to just talk about the different groups he's in. Um, in Mike's group, we, it was a communications group. Okay, I'm gonna ask y'all a question. Not the kids. How many of y'all know what communication is? Not y'all, T. <laughs> <laughs> to the parents. Wow. The definition. The definition. The definition. Send, is sending and receiving messages. Not just talking to one another, like, our body language, eye contact, sign language, all the different types of styles there is. Um, in Will's group, we learned about like what kind of leaders there are. Like, uh, Cedric said, I know. Uh, we learned about like ourselves. Like, okay, mom, I don't know. What kind of leader are you? Laissez faire, authoritarian, or dictator? <laughs> like, and that's my mom, you know. <laughs> like, uh, like myself, I said myself as a, um, a dictator, you know, like when I'm working with people at school, I mean, uh, yeah, I have the power and stuff, like when I'm in, I'm from, uh, if I'm in a group or something, but I'll be fair. Hush. Uh, uh, Gail, Gail, hi. What kind of lady do you think you are, ma'am? The third a little bit there? You still cool, though, I love you. Um, in, in Melvin and Melvin and Girls group, we learned about the different drugs. Like you know, a lot of us kids out here nowadays know what drugs are, what they can do to you. But we ain't know that much. But we learned all we needed to know to stop us from going out there, hanging with the crew, and smoking and getting high. Yeah. The different sides of the crack make you depressed, make one just jump off the edge and life. Forget about everything, your family. You, uh, yeah, thank you, brother. Uh, we learned about the side effects of weed, how it can kill you in an instant. You know. So uh, once again, I'd like to say thank you to all the leadership people, and uh, that's about it. Bye. Do we have any remarks from parents? Come on, Mom. I am a mom of 
too, but um, none of my children are in this program. I have a niece that's here from out of town, and this is the first year that I was able to enroll her in something like this. Uh, we're originally from East St. Louis, which is like a bad place. <laughs> they don't offer, you know, programs like this, and this was my opportunity to offer something to my family. So I just grabbed her, brought her up here, entered her in this program so she can see there's other things out there other than the drugs and other than gangs and the fighting and all that. So I'm trying to let her see that there's other things out there other than her getting into the bad things in life. And I did, I did a lot of stuff. I didn't do drugs, you know, but I had my children early. I did that. I did have sex and I did all that. So I'm trying to get her not to do this. But um, one of the parents said they want to know what the kids learn. I think if you have a relationship with the kids, then you would know what they learn. Yeah. You don't really need you know, someone to point things out what they learn. You need to have that communication, what he was talking about. You need to have that relationship with the kids so that you will know what's going on in their life. And sometimes it's not good to be real strict on the kids because that'll make them do things too. And that's another reason why I grabbed her because I know she's growing up in the home with my grandmother and I did that. <laughs> and that's why I have these two children now. So all I want to say is that try to have a good, you know, relationship with your kids and try to lead them in the right way. We can't make their decisions for them, but we can try to lead them to make the right decisions. Thank you. I just want to say anything what she said. I, this is James, this is my nephew. I know what James is doing. But you were right, I was just saying, everybody was saying they got up there to have fun, but I just wanted to know, when you went there every day, it wasn't just a paycheck, because I was once, I was Jim Robinson myself, and I was a recreational um, aide up there when I was going to the law so I just wanted to know, you know, what were you learning with, you know, this is stuff that you learned today and all summer long that is going to take you places, so that's all I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> like to say that I truly thank everyone that is involved. I've known Jim from a childhood, so by me saying that I've known him that long, that tells a little bit about my age, but to me, age is only a number. I, I don't have a hand. But what I would like to say is that it is so refreshing to see a program that let the youth know that I am somebody, I can be somebody, and that there are many rewards in doing things the right way. Yes, yes. That um, not looking over your back to see where your next meal or everything is gonna come from, that there are rewards in that. And so it is really a good thing for me to see this. Um, I know my son has been involved in a few different things in the program, but because of my work schedule, I work third, so normally I would be asleep now. But I am a mother that cares about her child. And I just said it to a lady that I work with today. I said, my child has to know I love him because working this shift, I wouldn't do it. But I do it so that I can be home in the evening during the times when he really might need me. And that the only time I'm gone is when he's asleep. But I, I just want to say once again, I really thank you to every one of you. And I hope that we continue to do stuff like this because there is so much promise right here in these youth. And for us to let it get away would be really sad. in the changes, him, most of these kids I've known as they were growing up. I see a lot of them 
uh, change from what I see in the streets to where they're young men, young women. And I am proud of mine and every kid in here because they are all showing the fact that we're not just something to give up on. One day, we will be somebody. We will always have some place to look forward to. Carson also gave me his leadership shirt, so I've been wanting those for quite a while. <laughs> I hope I don't have to give it back. <laughs> I can't have it. Uh, I know I didn't participate in your communication skills, but I'd like to leave something that they taught me in communication. Uh, whenever you're speaking, uh, stand up to be seen, speak up to be heard, and then sit down and be appreciated.
you're actually a volunteer, and I mean a serious volunteer in the community. I just want to thank you very much. Once he, when he settled down, he really could put his mind and do so, do those things. And I've been enforcing those things in Darcel. I work for St. Paul Public School Systems. I've been there nine years. My current job is at Boyce Totem Town. And I don't see a lot of positive stuff with our young men's there. Um, I'm either writing reports and sending them to jail or violating them. And it gets to be a hazardous job over and over and over again. Um, the young ladies, um, I don't work much with them. When I was at the detention center, I'd send them off to St. Croix Camp or someplace else out of state and parents couldn't reach their kids. So when you got your kids intact, keep them intact. Amen. That's what you need to do. You need to stay with them, be on them 24-7. That's what I tell you. And it's not easy. It's not easy. I'm a single parent. I have a full-time job, part-time job. I'm a full-time student graduating this year with my BS in human service. Oh, right. That's I know it is Oxford. I worked there as a youth, and I loved it. I want to say thank you, especially to Melinda Nelson. We graduated from high school, and it's been a long struggle. Long struggle, but I know we can make it. Thank you. Also commend um, Mr. Robinson and his crew. 
Um, I was, uh, I worked at Loft Teen Center too, back in the early 70s, I'm close to its inception. I also uh, grew up at Oxford Playground, along with a couple mothers that I see, quite a few actually. And most of the children here, I know most of their parents. They may not know it, but I do. <laughs> and um, my daughter, this is her first year, and she has matured a lot. I was a little worried because I didn't know what I was going to do with her. As a teen, I don't see many programs. And most of the programs that I do see, they are for older children. So I um, am really appreciative of this program, of the staff, and especially of the youth. This is a tremendous blessing for all of you, each and every one of you. And I think you should um, uh, take those blessings and run with them. We have a long ways to go. I see uh, positive, um, a lot of positive things going on in this community, in our community. And I say our community because it is your community as well. And I think we have to grow. We will grow together. And um, it's just truly a blessing, like I say, to see that the Law Team Center is still in existence. Like I, said, I was there when I was 12 years old. And to, for it to still be around, it fills my heart to know that you children have tremendous uh, a road, a journey in front of you that will never end. And I think that, um, it's important that each and every one of you take advantage to this tremendous blessing. And God bless each and every one of you. Being a success.
Um, all the parents said they covered everything. And I really have to say this, okay? I truly depended on it. It's my way. Honestly, depended on it. I have five girls, one boy, two grands. I put three girls, three girls, right? Three girls in the program. And as they grew on and got older, I saw the changes. I saw how they learned from the program. Josh is my only boy. It's a knucklehead. Gosh, it's, I mean, it's hard with him. Five girls, they went smooth. They go up and down, they went smooth. But Josh, I don't know. And because he's <clears throat> one boy out of five girls, I'm always knocking at Jim's door, Michael, Will, no. Whoever I can grab around here, shelter. Anybody. Because there's plenty of people, positive people, staff members, and I don't have a problem with having any one of them stop and say, hey, can you help me? I help. They'll stop right away, okay? What's the problem? Josh is the problem. And I think he learned a lot. I think he, yeah, I think he, because this year, well, last year, he was a little bit slow. This year, he was like, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, because he you know his sister was in and everything, so I'm ready. He didn't know how ready he needed to be. Once he got into the program, he had to deal with the rules, the responsibilities, to know how everything. He was not ready. Now he knows what it takes to be ready. And I think this year, when they go the coming year, he will be ready because he's so really anxious about how he wants to be ready and what he needs to do. And he looked and seemed so sincere. So I think he will, and I know he have learned, and I think he'll be much a much better uh, person the next time around. And to say again, <clears throat> because of being a single parent, you need that extra <coughs> person there, which we really didn't have. Um, you can tell your kids over and over. Josh being the younger one, he's heard it all over and over and over. You, it's to me, it, if you, if they talk, you can talk to your kids, they hear you, they know, but when someone else, positive, give them the same words, seem to listen, you know? They seem to really listen, so that's why I feel I can do only so much, and once, I get to that point, and it, it gets old. Then I start looking for a positive role model, someone I can get help, you know, to help my kids. And I found it right at the Jim Lee Rec Center. And I won't go anywhere else. I mean, I, I haven't had anywhere, I, mean, I haven't seen anyone, any other um, rec center with this program. So that's why, and I'm looking forward to having my grandkids there, because they are something else. <laughs> and no fun, and no joke. So I just had to come up and say that I truly, honestly, depend on the rec center. Uh, the uh, Jimmy, what's the name? Yeah, because they got the other program, the summit. Yeah, I, I depend on that totally. I, I wouldn't know where else to go. And I've had the help, and I'm still getting the help. And I, you know, I'm really looking forward to um, dealing with them, my grandkids. So I would like to thank you. We're running a little over time, uh, so we're going to go right back to uh, the, the ceremony, award ceremony, ceremony portion. Uh, right now we're going to do the employment program. Lucy Cha. <laughs> Charles Christopher.
Greer Gentry. Our employment comedian, Darcelle Jackson. Second place employment comedian, Benjamin Poole. Outstanding achievement and outstanding achievement in the employment program. Uh, we don't look at giving a person an award for perfect attendance because that's expected. Um, we want people, you know, to to call in and do all the right things, uh, show initiative, help out, um, help others, and these people exemplify that by getting to work on a regular basis, um, not calling in, being there on time. Uh, and doing all the right things. Um, first young lady has been in the program for a couple of years, um, Tay Smith. center um, in our reception area, our snack bar, and our game room. Um, they're solely responsible for those areas. They monitor, they cashier, they answer the phones and direct calls. Uh, so we depend upon them to actually uh, run the building. They also take part in weekly workshops on um, resume writing, interviewing skills, uh, basically your job seeking and keeping skills. So. Um, those are some of the things that they do. And the main outcome for that program is we know we're successful when they leave us and go out and get a better job. Um, just like uh, Lashana's mother said, she wants a real job now. And we fail. Our program fails if you know they stay with us for five, six years, and they're not able to get a job. You know We want them to come in, the doors stay a year or two, and then go get them something better and keep moving on. So all the people uh, in the employment program, please stand and everyone give them a round of applause. <laughs> Next we have uh, our youth leadership and training program. First of all, I'd like to thank the parents for your children and thank all our participants. We had some fun times in leadership. What we do is we have workshops on problem solving, decision making, drug awareness, communication, leadership styles, and gang awareness. We also do what we call community service, where we go into the community, 
uh, like the Lexington Health Care Center, we uh, read short stories, do Pokino. Uh, mentioning that, though, we do have a community service project tomorrow, 145. Um, <laughs> we go to the family shelter, serve food, to the Dorothy Day Center, serve food, do the cleanup. We right. pass out flyering for different organizations, so we do a lot. And myself, I started, I came to the loft when I was a teenager, and there was some times that I wasn't perfect, so sometimes we do get upset when you don't put forth your foot, and you guys have seen me in group, when you guys get your little clown on, I get my hands on too, I have to change suits, you know? But we get it together. But I just say that, um, try to do your best all the time. You're not perfect, we don't expect you to be perfect, but we do expect you to be the best. And with that, we're gonna start off with the participants. This category is for participant in the leadership program. Stanley Anderson. Charles Christopher. Kenny Lofton and his sister Kenesha will pick his and hers, Kenesha Lofton also. Jamel Shows, Tashonda Smith, Sequan Vaughn. This next category is participation in the leadership program and also participation in community service projects. Matthew Anderson. Raymond Anderson. Akira Johnson. Kanisha Lofton. Dan and Warhead. Sierra Watson. This next category is perfect attendance, participation in the leadership program, and community service. Shania Jackson. certificate for those that are in hers is for perfect attendance and she'll receive a certificate for targets for school supplies remember that my pay thou this one is for participation community service and leadership being outstanding that means that in the groups, they were really outstanding. They, you know, made comments, they asked questions of the guest speaker, and they also had some comments of their own. Darcelle Jackson. <laughs> Sandy 
Hendrika Simmons. This next category, excuse me, category is participation, community service, and that means they did more than eight hours of community service and outstanding and perfect attendance. Lucy Chow. My Lee Chow. The Fanya Sutton. Jennifer Dow. Lisa Jean. This one is Participation in Leadership and Perfect Attendance, Talisha Roberts. Participation in the program, community service, and outstanding. Lavelle Anderson. Angel Christopher. Shantae Hamill. Hamill, I'm sorry. Ludella Morehead. Shelton Jr. Annette Simmons. So when she made the comment about 
you have to want to be a person working in social services because there's not a lot of money, she's absolutely right. Thank you. is Dr. James Shelton. And a little bit about uh, Dr. Shelton. He talked about being chair of the Booster Club. And let me share with you, that's a huge assignment. Uh, it's a person who comes in on a daily basis, who really acts more like a staff person, and does a lot of things that normally <coughs> You wouldn't see a volunteer do. Uh, and it's always there for not just our kids, but for all kids who come to the center. So we appreciate your time to join the six flags. And then last but not least, uh, the gentleman that I'm going to provide two certificates to. Uh, and why is he getting two? One, he was brave enough to go to Six Flags, and more importantly, uh, he has worked for us off and on as a volunteer over the course of many years, and uh, he came up this evening and he talked about uh, all the wonderful things about the program, but more importantly, he talked about himself. Um, Mitchell McDonald is someone who very rarely talks about himself, um, very rarely puts Mitchell McDonald in front of people. Um, Romy goes about doing what he should do and sits down and lets the world go around. Uh, Mitchell, we really thank you for your service and your work. Now, before I close and get away from here, let me just uh, make another comment about the award that we gave Mitchell. Um, we, we did send him uh, an item in the mail that we wanted to give to him tonight. Unfortunately, uh, he received it earlier today, so we couldn't give it to him tonight, uh, which is another award that, that he got as well. Thank you, parents, for your volunteerism. Um, and lastly, I'm going to make my closing remarks um, really simple and, and brief. Uh, I'm glad that uh, I had an opportunity to meet and work with all the youth this year. Um, this summer program was is like a, a title of an old western. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And I say that because there were some truly good things that we did this summer, that we accomplished. Uh, we had good fun. Uh, we enjoyed ourselves. Um, it's an opportunity for people to make friends, to learn, and you've seen a lot of caring going on. Uh, some of the bad things, we had some kids that got kicked out of the program, kids that couldn't do the right things uh, after giving them opportunities to to correct their behavior and, and correct some things. And the ugly. I guess that would be probably me. And I say me because I'm usually the enforcer. When things aren't going right, you know, I'm the one that pulls all the kids into the lounge and does a whole lot of hollering and, you know, saying we got to get things right. Um, I'm the one that sends kids home. Uh, tell them that they can't go to any more activities. And it has a trickle down effect on some of the other kids that haven't done anything wrong at all. So I kind of equate the, the program as, as the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, but I just hope that everyone that has been involved in the program, um, everyone that the program has touched, um, will make uh, the last two parts uh, of that movie title disappear and the rest of their life will just be good. So I thank everyone for coming. Uh, continue to support each other and continue to strive to be better. Thank you.